talking to Pi from Lord of the Lost. Thanks for taking the time and talking to me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, good morning, I should say, in here in Germany. <laughs> Whereabouts in Germany are you? In Hamburg. All of us are. Almost all of us. Excellent. Just about to come out with a double album, Judas. Now, this is absolutely huge. Now, where did the idea come for this? Where did the inspiration behind uh, doing a double album uh, about this? <laughs> Tell us how you came to that. Yeah, sure. I mean... First of all, I, we thought it seems very, very adequate as a seventh studio album to really release some big stuff, right? So um, we we knew initially that it should be a double album, but let's go let's go back let's go back in time for a bit because you were asking about the inspiration for actually it all started actually with a Lady Gaga song, <laughs> right. believe it or not. Um, our singer Chris, he's he is a diehard Lady Gaga fan, so she has a song that is called Judas, and it's not necessarily about the song that we were all of a sudden inspired to make an album called Judas. It's more the word itself or the name itself, because yeah. to that name there is a lot of history, obviously, and also a lot of a lot of meaning behind it. Because, I mean. Everyone, I think, or the majority of the people, when you when you ask them, what do you think about when you hear the word Judas, they they think about treason, or mm. they they see Judas as a traitor, and that is the conven conventional story that is uh, probably written down in the Bible. Um, but apart from that, if you yeah, if you do your research. What we did on Judas, you will experience a lot of alternative ways of looking at the history of Judas. There are stories that portray him as the worst of all evil. And there are actually stories that that see him as, well, the actual savior. And that was when we read about all of that, we came to a point that um, we we thought, OK, there are so many what ifs. <laughs> to to the story of Judas. So we were thinking about what if what if Judas um, didn't betray Jesus? What what would have happened then, or what wouldn't have happened then? Because then there wouldn't have been any crucifixion. There wouldn't have been the cross as the the probably the biggest selling merchandise product ever, and also the symbol of the church. There wouldn't have been Christianity, um, and it's hard to imagine how the world would look like then, but it's also very interesting. It's a big what if, isn't it? It is a very big what if. Yeah. So that's that's how we got more and more into the story and how we stayed interested in that. And also, um, we tried to 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 transfer everything that was said about Judas and our own imaginations of judas onto our own lives because we were th that's just one example we were we were thinking about the fact i mean jesus and judas could have been friends right i mean after all he followed him everywhere so what if a friend is telling you um you know i have to ask you this one thing you have to you have to betray me so I, I can die to save mankind. And how would that make you feel as a friend when your friend is telling you, you have to betray me so I can die? Um, that is a very selfish, but also at the same time, selfless thing to ask. So that is one example that we thought of, okay, wow. Um, there is way more to the story of Judas than just written down in the Bible. If we just wanted to write about that story in the Bible, we could have done that in one song. Mm. Uh, but not on 24 songs on a double album. So <laughs> we experienced basically everything in between those two extremes of Judas being the worst of all evil and the actual savior. Mm. And that's how we, how we were actually able to come up with such a big concept and to fill our idea of a double album. Yeah. Now CD one is labeled on the paperwork that I've got damnation. And yeah. CD two is salvation. So tell us about the 
the um the split there are they following two different stories or is it part one and part two yeah i mean part one and part two going you know (laughs) story a or story b running concurrent yeah (laughs) if you say yes then the story will continue like this no um it is i mean we 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 obviously when you have a double album you have two sides um but we didn't write necessarily with the imagination in mind that we wanted to have this damnation side and the salvation side that came while we wrote the songs and we're like okay how can we make sense to um yeah parting it in between and have 12 songs on one side and 12 songs on the other and um one side damnation which is the the dark side if you will Mm. um all of the songs on there while being a bit more moody a bit heavier a bit darker which wasn't our our main focus um but it happened luckily Mm. so it made sense um they they focus on kind of more the sinister aspects of what we gathered from our research concerning Judas. And as opposing to that, salvation is the, well, yeah, the, the, the bright side of everything and focuses on, yeah, the more bright topics, quote unquote, if you will. And it's not necessarily lighter musically, but it's, I should say, a bit more uplifting. Do you think you would have had time or the inclination to do this big project if there wasn't lockdown? Like, did lockdown give you the time to do this? Or do you think you would have done this anyway? Were you starting on this before lockdown? Uh, yes, we, we, we started it before lockdown. We, yeah, okay. we had the whole research thing going uh, actually on tour. We were lucky to go on tour at the start of 2020 in January and February, European tour. And what we did, we, 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 while the others were drinking beer, Chris and I, we were reading books at night and uh, making notes and yeah, yeah, the others were having a party and we were, yeah, like students doing our homework, uh, every night, uh, researching on the topic. So we did the research anyway, yeah. so it would just would have been way more stressful way more stressful as it already was if there would have been all of our touring schedule yeah in 2020 that we actually had we had a tour with iron maiden lined up we uh, we there was so much all the fest summer festivals all of that f- fell away or was mm. this postponed now postponed now to 2022 um so we had all all of a sudden had a lot of time on our hands which we were then able to fill to the max because we were able to focus on every detail and we're actually able to say okay um we really want to record a real church organ let's record a real choir let's let's yeah. record string the uh, string uh string arrangements and stuff mm. so it's good that you mentioned the organ the church organ, yeah because i had that written down to ask about that <laughs> was it done in a church it was done in an actual church. It was done in the church where we actually shot a music video for a song "Till Death Us Do Part." Right. Um, so we already had a good relationship with with that church, and we asked them again if we could record their church organ and have us play the church organ, not a not a full organist. Um, yeah, so we did that there, and everything you hear concerning church organ on the on the album. And everything you hear concerning reverb, it's all natural. It's the natural reverb of that church. There's nothing, there's no software plugin. Um, so, yeah. You've given a massive roundup on the albums. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Like you said, 24 songs, two full albums. It's not like two EPs and calling it a double album. It's two, <laughs> it's two full length albums. That's a lot of work. And they're all decent length songs so so that is a lot of work it is yeah yeah, yeah. we we um 
And that's why that's one part why we're so proud of it. We actually managed to to at least in our opinion to fill that big body of work with everything that we wanted to everything that we wanted to do on that album worked out which is probably the rarest case ever mm -hmm. um and also we wrote that album i mean we didn't we we, we uh, didn't say that okay we want 24 songs that's what we have to do we knew we wanted to double album but what we did we did one week of songwriting in a songwriting camp um gathering us as a band gathering a few people from our crew who are also brilliant songwriters and a few musician friends and for one week every day we got together in small groups of two or three people changing the group from day to day hmm. um, and trying to write in each group one song every day and that actually worked out to almost the full extent so after one week of songwriting we had i think 20 of those 24 songs written um and we were like okay we already have a double album now but there was so much more to say so there were actually four more songs and luckily which is sometimes the case on other double albums some songs are kind of similar to others yeah, yeah. and might get repetitive i think we avoided that um just by yeah, by having so much to write about. Mm. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Written in that way with like little groups and swapping the groups around. No one in the groups is a school teacher, are they? No, it seems kind of a school teacher it, way, right? It, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, the kids no. In the little study groups and little Johnny, little Johnny doesn't work with little Alex over here. So swap them around. <laughs> but it, it, it that's how we work best. That's how we found we did work best. We started yeah. this concept on, on Thornstar, our previous album. And that was our most successful album to date. And we had a lot of fun doing it like this. So we extended that concept onto more people that we hold dear to our hearts. Um, and yeah, did it that way. And we had a lot of fun for one week. Um, working our asses off starting in the morning and then in the evening we always got together and had listening sessions um about the products giving uh, the, the songs giving feedback um or saying ah that song doesn't fit but here's why it doesn't fit but also the songs that didn't make it to the album there there are actually more songs <laughs> um <laughs> that didn't make it to the album well, got, gospels got cut out of the Bible too. So, uh... yeah, yeah, these songs there aren't there aren't in the trash. I mean, they're on hard drives. We can give them to other artists if we want to, because we feel like it fits more to artist X. Mm. Um, and f coincidence, actually, um, there have been twelve apostles, and on both sides there are twelve songs. Mm. I did notice that. I didn't notice. I didn't that. intend to do that, but it <laughs> makes it makes perfect sense. <laughs> uh, it does. You're a band that I just cannot categorize. And I mean that in a nice way. I'm sure you've heard that before. In one of the emails that came out, there was a new term I've got to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Genre fluid. Um, which is interesting. But yeah, I just can't categorize him. Yeah, I mean, that must be good. In the past, there have, as you said, there have been a lot of people uh, who were like, but what are you? Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, we can be everything. Yeah. Um, or at least we don't, we don't want to limit ourselves. I mean, if there are people who call us a gothic band, they're not wrong, but they're also not entirely right. If there are people who call us a metal band, same thing, they're not wrong, mm. but we like to draw from any inspirational source we we have and we we like a lot of music that isn't metal and that isn't true if you will but then again you have to ask yourself what is actually true metal uh, or whatever we just um figured out for ourselves that with individuality um 
or your individuality only stops when you set yourself limits and we don't want to set ourselves limits and therefore we just said okay i mean you, you, people will put you in a box anyway mm. at some point but we don't like to do that for them um so you can open your box if you want to but um you you see for yourself if we fit into that we know we don't mm. Let's talk about your tour that um, got postponed with Iron Maiden. Let's take you back to when you got announced that you were going to be touring with Iron Maiden. That must have been a big, um, like, whoa moment. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, still hard to fathom because it didn't actually happen yet, but they are still taking us on tour. They were, like, reconfirming everything for 2021. And as it was clear that it won't happen, they were again saying, or their booking agent, I should say, was again saying, yep, they're taking you on tour when in, for the new dates as well. Don't worry. You're on the bill. Whatever happens. Was this for Europe or USA or both? It is for Europe. Yeah, okay. It is for Europe. And when when we got the initial message, <laughs> our booking agent called Chris and was like, Chris, are you sitting down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris was like, I don't know. No. Did someone die? Um, and he was like, no, but Iron Maiden want to take you on tour. And without asking any one of us, he was like, yes, we're doing it. <laughs> and of course, of course. I mean, and he told two minutes after that call, he called us and I was standing in a subway station <laughs> and I mean, I was looked, I was looked at funny because I started screaming <laughs> like a little girl and then started crying. Um, no, I'm not kidding. Mm. And because, because I was just asking why, why us and doing our research as uh, Steve Harris, the bass player from Iron Maiden and founder of Iron Maiden, he said in an interview for Metal Hammer um, that he got, or well, we got his attention, um, I don't know, through, I think through YouTube or something. The question was, what's going to be the next biggest thing in metal? Yeah. And he said two things. First of all, there is Within Temptation, which is his favorite band ever. Yeah. And he's happy to take them on tour. And then he said, there's this new German metal band called Lord of the Lost. Their last album was brilliant. We're taking them on as well. And I mean, it's Steve Harris, right? Is he wrong? I don't think so. <laughs> so yeah, that's how that happened. I'm very humbled. All right. We're just about out of time. One quick one. Yeah. What's the funniest thing that's happened Funniest thing that won't get anyone else locked up in jail. Okay. Um, I mean, it almost got someone locked up in jail, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't happen. So I can tell um, we were in, uh, we were touring in Russia. Um, that's the first thing that pops into my head. And mm. we were like um, playing in Moscow. And at the f first, <laughs> Right before the show, our uh, tour manager, she came into the room and was like, yeah, guys, there's been an incident. Um, everything, everyone's fine. Okay. So I have to disclose it. Sorry. Yeah, I have okay. to disclose it here now. But there was a girl trying to take her life um, because she wasn't allowed to go to your shows uh, here in Moscow because you do gay things on stage. <laughs> we were like, what? What? <laughs> I mean, it's it's very heavy. I can tell by your face. <laughs> but I um, asked for the funniest story and there you were. Yeah, I know, but it was, sorry, it was the first thing that popped to my head. And it gets funnier, it gets funnier. As I said, no one was harmed. Um, so she forced her mother or uh, to 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 latch her to the show, and her mother was was saying that we shouldn't do gay things, or otherwise um, she will call the police. And I was looking out for the police during the whole show. If there are any policemen around, 
and I lost track of thought at one point. And um, I mean, we have we have fun on stage. We, we, I mean, you can do on stage whatever you want as long as you don't, I don't know, kill animals, sacrifice animals on stage or whatever. Um, but if you have fun with each other and give someone a, a kiss on, on the cheek or whatever, I slapped our bass player's ass while crossing him. And at that moment, I looked at him. He looked at me like, and I was like, shh. And also I turned around and was, I was so sure of the fact that someone was pointing a gun at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so relieved that no one did. Uh, but that was one moment where I was like, oh, I should not have done that. I should not have done that. Uh, but nothing happened. So I, I can disclose that. But uh, that was a really weird touring moment. Yeah. Yeah, um, I bet. Well, I'll tell you, when I ask that question, I get some interesting answers. Yeah, I, I can assume. So we've got the album Judas coming out on the 2nd of July, according to my calendar. Is that correct? That is correct. Absolutely huge. Two CDs, 12 apostles on each CD. <laughs> right. Hey, Pi from Lord of the Lost, thanks for joining me today. Best of luck with this new massive double album, Judas. Just an absolute monster of a piece of work. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, no problems. Congratulations on it. Best of luck with it. Thank you. And we'll talk soon, I think, in the future. It was my third or our third Australian interview ever. So it's premiere day today. Excellent. <laughs> hey, That's very cool. And thank you. Thanks, mate. You have a great day over there. Thanks. You have a great evening.